here. So today we are starting a brand new series of videos. Uh, it's going to be a, a new thing we're doing on the on the group page, while he's out the world. And it's going to be a weekly occurrence. I'm going to upload a video, and it's going to be about a particular topic over a certain number of weeks until we finish what that topic entails. So this week, and for the following few weeks, it's going to be Tinder, primitive Tinder. So that's going to cover the likes of your birch bark, um, chaga, horseshoe, you know, um, fatwood, anything like that. We're going to do a weekly video covering each one of those. So today we are going to take a look at, maybe you can see behind me, we are going to take a look at some birch bark. I'm going to show you how to identify birch, the best way of going about harvesting it, and We'll also go about the, um, the pros and cons that come with, with using birch bark as well. So let's get stuck in. Okay guys, so we've got two birch trees here. Birch is one of our first native trees and it's often found growing amongst Caledonian pine or Scots pine as it's otherwise known. And birch is easily identifiable because of this sort of white bark that it has and also the grain that goes along it. I'll give you guys a close-up of that just now. Okay so this is birch bark close-up. You can see the the whiteness of it. Um, it's really not matched by, by anything else. And also the biggest giveaway is the grain that goes across the bark. And that's probably the main identifying feature of birch bark. So birch tends to grow just about everywhere over the UK. Um, it's very resistant. Temperature wise it can handle just about anything. It grows in Spain and it grows all the way up in sort of Alaska, Norway. Um, so you can find it just about anywhere over the UK. It does sort of prefer dry woodland but again it's very resistant so you'll find it just about anywhere really. Um, so next I'll show you a few different sort of states in which you can find the tree and which ones we want to harvest from. So we'll, uh, we'll go and talk about that just now. Okay, so this would be an example of a living tree. As you can tell, it's quite clean. Um, it's not soft to the touch. A lot of birch trees, when they start to die, they'll get very soft and squishy. But this is still very solid. Another way you can tell is this tree, for example, doesn't have any mushrooms on it. Not all dead birch trees will have mushrooms, but if they do, it's a very good indicator that they died. So the sort of stuff you would look out for is this horseshoe fungus and this birch polypore. So they're both sort of parasitic funguses. They'll sort of consume what's left of the tree and it dies over time. But I can see on this tree there's there's no signs of any um, sort of fungus growth. And it's still, still got a lot of foliage up the top. Lots of branches and lots of leaves that have recently come down. Now, before you go and try and harvest birch bark, personally I would always, always take birch bark from a dead tree. Um, taking bark from a living tree exposes it to the risks we just talked about, so the parasitic funguses and stuff like that. So if you're in doubt, and it's worth doing even though it causes the tree a, you know, the smallest amount of damage, just take your knife. Poke a little hole in and you can tell straight away just by underneath the, the bark whether it's still living or not. I'll give you guys a close-up of that just now. So hopefully you guys can see that. That's where I've just made that little mark and as you can see underneath the wood is still very fresh and green and that's the sort of bark we don't want to be taking um, because when you strip a tree of its bark it doesn't really matter what tree it is it will um, cause it a lot of damage and expose it to sort of infections as well. 
So a tree living like this is not the sort of tree we want to take bark from. But that's just to give you guys an idea of what you're looking for. That little nick there won't do any damage to the tree. As you can see, it's just tiny. So if you're really not sure, that's what to do. Okay, so all that being said, let's go and find the tree that we actually can take the bark from and I'll show you guys different ways of doing it and uh, I'll show you the sort of stuff you're looking for for good fire lighting material. So let's go and do that. So this is the kind of tree I like to look for. Um, you can tell it's dead because of the, uh, the break up here. It's obviously been split in half at some point and that's going to have obviously killed the tree straight away. And as you can see here, as we talked about earlier, the bark is fairly squishy and soft. In fact, the whole sort of tree stump is uh, just about ready to come down. But as you can see, it's got some really nice sheets of bark here, really nice and clean. And uh, that's the kind of bark I like. Um, I don't like to have any of these knots or any tears like this. So this is the kind of bit we're looking for. So I'll show you how to take that off just now. So as you can see, this is the kind of the bit I'm going to go for. It's nice and clean, um, like we talked about a minute ago. No tears or anything. So it doesn't really take too much to get this off. Um, just a small knife will do the job. So what I like to do is make a cut down the way, and then one across the top and one across the bottom. And what that does is lets you sort of peel off the bark as a sheet. So the first thing to do is come in up the top, be careful of your fingers obviously. Cut down. Didn't even need to cut across there. And as you can see what happens is we end up with this big sheet here and it just kind of peels off and as you can see all the, the rotten wood in here peels off and as you can see that piece went round the entire length of the tree so that's a really good bit of birch bark um, and what you're looking for when you find bark and you think it's going to be suitable for fire lighting is this red colour and what that red is is all the resins and oils still in the birch bark and the red is a really good indicator that they're all still there and it's still gonna gonna take a spark nicely so I'll take this back over to a um, little tree stump and I'll show you guys how to process it okay guys so we've got our bark here I got two pieces off that tree We'll work with a smaller piece for now and um, as you can see it came off with a layer of um, sort of punk wood underneath and what we want to do is just to try and remove that in order to get to this red clean bark underneath and the easiest way to do that is just to fold it and as you can see it will sort of naturally start to peel away So hopefully you guys can see that. You want to bend with the grain, so you're bending it like that. What will happen is the dead wood will just come off. And actually it leaves you with this really nice wood underneath. Or bark, sorry. So very easy and quick to process. And you can see that's the sort of stuff we'll get left with there. Really nice birch bark. So it's as easy as that to process. Once you've done that and you've got your sheet, you can cut it into sort of more usable squares and uh, stick it in your pack and then you use it whenever you need it. Okay, so there we have it. That's our birch bark all cleaned up. As you can see, I got all the punk weed off and it's nice and clean and right underneath to me says it's ready to go and we'll cover how you go about using birch bark to start a fire in a later series of videos 
this video today is going to be the first video of maybe five or six about different tinders that you can find and how to process them so they're ready to use and then the video series after this one will be a follow-up on that and how to use these different tinders to actually start a fire so that's going to be it for today i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you find it useful if there's any particular tinder you want to see done next um, just leave a, a comment down below there'll be an upload every every saturday and if it takes off and you guys like it we'll try and get two a week so maybe one saturday one wednesday but that's going to do it for me guys hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all again soon